Hello and welcome, I'm Shilpa Ratnam and you are watching CNN News 18. Now, a top focus is a big expose on Chinese loan apps. Beware of loans from the dragon because they will drag on. The Enforcement Directorate cracked a whip on scams being carried out by these loan apps. While the borrowers were being promised quick loans, in return they had to pay a huge price under pressure and threats by these money lenders. At least seven people died by suicide in the last two months. The ED has provisionally attached bank balances worth 105.32 crore lying in various accounts with payment gateway accounts of 12 NBFCs. CNN News 18 brings you this exclusive report on the same. Take a look. Threatened. Bullied. Harassed. Named and shamed. They borrowed quick loans to support their families, but the killer Chinese loan apps got the better of them. At least seven suicides in the last two months alone. The latest is that of 17-year-old Harita Varshini from NTR district of Andhra Pradesh, who took her own life as she couldn't endure the prolonged harassment that she and her family were facing for borrowing an educational loan of 6.5 lakhs. In Hyderabad, 25-year-old Sai Arvind is still recovering from the trauma he went through last year after borrowing 15,000 rupees from multiple loan apps. I took the money from my bank loan app and after around one week or two weeks they started demanding me like 10 times the money I took. So I have paid them once, twice and after that I, I could not pay because the amount has uh, crossed around 1.25 lakhs. So then they started harassing me by sending my more, more photos to my friends, relatives, family and then later I approached the police to solve my matter and uh, f for around 15 to 20 days they have tortured me, my family members, everyone. Uh, they have uh, damaged in whatever possible way they could. Respond to their calls, they will start doing all the stuff uh, like uh, they used to add around 10 members of my contact list and they used to send them like uh, he is fraud, he is thief and he has uh, took money from a bank. Uh, no one should uh, give money to this person. Loans can be obtained only via two means, banks or NBFCs. Now these apps are no longer dependent on NBFCs. The Telangana police has identified more than 200 shell companies based in Delhi, Bengaluru and Bihar, which are dispersing the loan through current accounts. They are also masking their identity behind VPN to evade police crackdown. Earlier they used to have a tie-up with the NBFCs. Now they don't have a tie-up with NBFCs. So what they are doing, they are creating a, a fake fintech companies. Uh, they have contacts where the, earlier the people who worked in the call centers, they are continuing the contacts, the Chinese people, they are continuing the contact and uh, uh, they are convincing the people uh, here in India and they are asking them to provide these uh, fintech company accounts. Unlike last time where the police could crack down on these fraudulent call centers operating in cities like Delhi, Bengaluru, Gurugram and Hyderabad, this time around it has been found that these Chinese operators are running big brackets in Nepal. They are running these call centers, hiring people who can speak Hindi to blackmail Indians back home who have borrowed money. Local agencies in Nepal have arrested four Chinese nationals and cracked down on at least three such call centers in Kathmandu and Butwal, where they seized Indian SIM cards and laptops containing confidential details of borrowers from India. The call center agents used two software, NX Cloud Tele and STI, through which outgoing calls couldn't be tracked back to them. Calls were also made using WhatsApp and those who failed to repay the loans were threatened with morphed pictures and pornographic content. Some Indians trained here are now said to be operating multiple gangs in India and are currently working from home. According to the policy of WhatsApp, it will ask for an OTP when certain number is registered on WhatsApp. If that number is shared and uh, uh, that OTP is shared, the WhatsApp number of the genuine user will be activated in the device of somebody else. The scale of the investigation is enormous. 
even as more victims fall prey to the loan apps. Police officials say the only solution to curb this menace is more awareness among people and stricter guidelines for payment gateways. Yeah, first of all, people should uh, have awareness regarding these loan apps because they are uh, giving permissions to contacts, locations, media and all these. They should not give permissions uh, to such confidential information. As Chinese masterminds continue to hide in other countries, the Enforcement Directorate has provisionally attached unaccounted bank balances to the tune of 264 crores. But that is just the tip of the iceberg of this mega scam, which has ruined hundreds of lives. With Swastika Das and video journalist Venkatesh in Hyderabad, Anisya Kumar for CNN News 18. Okay, so let's take a look at the modus operandi of these fake loan apps. The borrower clicks on the loan app. The app communicates with the payment gateways. The loan is dispersed from this fake fintech company. The loan amount is beefed up within weeks. Victim, family harassed for non-payment or late payment. We just saw a victim talk about taking 15,000. He ended up paying about 1.5 lakhs and he was still being harassed. Now, of course, there were photos that were morphed sexually, but also photos where uh, you know their IDs were uh, stamped as fraud and circulated amongst their friends and family and just caused so much embarrassment. Now, we're joined by my colleague Swastika, who brought you that groundbreaking report. A very, a very good morning. A very, a very good morning to you, Swastika. Um, you know, we saw what the police were saying. So what I understood was these people are using defunct N uh, NBFCs because currently no new NBFCs are issued. Currently, we know of 12 NBFCs, uh, you know, who are operating so far. Why can't there be an extensive crackdown on them? Because I think together they amount to about a to a tune of 800 crores already. I know the ED is constantly attaching property and in all they've attached around 300 crores. All right, all right. Uh, as you can see, we're trying to establish that connection. So what has happened is NBFCs were earlier issued to these companies and they saw that these frauds were taking place. Then later, these Chinese companies decided to enter into an MOU and they started using some defunct NF NBFCs which were already there. And using that, they've started doing these scams. Uh, Swastika, if you can hear me, currently this uh, research shows that there are around 12 NBFCs that are in circulation. Those are the defunct NBFCs taken over by these Chinese loan apps. Why can't there just be a strict crackdown on these? I know the uh, ED is already doing that. At least uh, to uh, a tune of about 260 crores has been attached by the ED. But is that what is that what they're currently doing to curb this menace? This is just the tip of the iceberg and I tell that because just by attaching the NBFCs will not solve the problem. The ED is already doing its job on that front. But what really remains as a big surprise this time around is, remember, the Chinese loan app scam came to light back in 2020. We had reported extensively back then how these loan apps uh, harass victims when they borrow money and eventually the money is circulated. Now this time around, it is an even bigger and a well-organized crime. And I say that because our investigation has found out that these loan apps are now no longer linked with the non-banking financial companies, NBFCs. And that is because these, it is very easy perhaps for the agencies to crack down on NBFCs. You get a bank account and then that eventually leads to arrest. You get a hint of where the money is coming from. But this time around, the cybercrime department of the Telangana police, which has been extensively uh, investigating on these cases because the multiple cases, in fact, uh, hundreds of cases, majority of them are being reported from Mumbai and in the state of uh, Telangana as well. Now here, not only uh, is the fact that they are no longer linked with NBFCs. The other challenge here is that these call centers, which really are the mastermind of these Chinese agents, which call each and every victim and harass them, uh, these are no longer operating from India. 
Our report has extensively showed that these call centers are now majorly running from Nepal. Why Nepal? Because now the Chinese agents are very much aware that in India there is an heightened awareness against the loan app scam. And that is the reason why in Nepal at least three such call centers have been raided and busted by the local agencies there. And there it was revealed and understood that all of these call center agents were operating SIM cards from India, not just that, they were making internet calls to victims. Let me just break it down very quickly. Let's say I borrow some amount through these loan apps. I'm sent a link. After that link, I download the link. I'm not promised the entire amount. I'm only given part of that amount. After that, within five days of borrowing, the loan sharks start harassing me. They harass me and they ask me to pay double the amount that I have borrowed. When I fail to do that, or in many cases when victims have in fact paid the whole amount, they are still being harassed. And this time, harassment is on another level. What they do is they morph my pictures, they add it to porn websites, and then they circulate it to various WhatsApp groups. Remember, they have already hacked into my phone and my personal details by the, the day or the moment I download these apps. They have special technologies like that. And after that, they create these WhatsApp groups with my family members, with my friends, with my office colleagues, and they circulate my pictures. Imagine the level of harassment that uh, these loan sharks are suspecting, at this, uh, are, are making the victims go through. And in this trauma, only half the victims have lost their lives. In fact, in the last two months alone, in Telangana and Andhra, there have been seven suicide cases. The 17-year-old girl died because her family had borrowed 6.5 lakhs from these loan sharks, unable to play, uh, pay the whole amount and the harassment that her family was put through, she ended her life. Now, these call centers in Nepal are primarily vested with this job. They are in contact with their Chinese agents through app like DingTalk and WeTalk, uh, WeChat, and in fact, and even on WhatsApp. So they make internet calls to the victims here. After that, when a victim fails to pay, they start harassing them by pushing their content through pornographic websites. So imagine that mental harassment. Now, on the investigation front, why is a big challenge? Because the investigative agencies say if there are call centers operating in India, as it has been in the past cases, they were easily able to carry raids on them. Raids were carried out in Bengaluru, in Hyderabad, Delhi, Gurugram, in different places. But this time around, these call centers are still operating in Nepal. Back home, the Indian agents who are being trained by these Chinese are working from home and they are using or they are hiding behind a virtual private network VPNs to avoid and evade being identified by the police. So the challenges are multiple and if you're talking about the financial assessment and the money trail of the entire business, well, that's totally unaccounted for at this point in time. 204 crores have been identified, highlighted by the Telangana police. Telangana police already says they have identified 200 uh, such fake fintech companies which are being heralded, which are being heralded by these ch Chinese agents and also the Indian directors, uh, you know, who are manning them. They have identified these companies, but what challenge they are facing right now is constantly the details are changing. And that's the reason why they're not able to put a finger on one particular uh, site or a place where they can go and nab the accused because it is a multiple, it's a max, it's a huge network of uh, organized crimes and criminals that are operating this entire loan scam, which has already claimed so many lives. Back to you. Thank you so much, Swastika. That was a very detailed and eye-opening report. So for our viewers, just remember, if you have to take a loan, take it from a bank that you know, a bank that you trust, and not these fly-by-night Chinese operators, who, and because that's going to cost you a lot. It's going to be a huge price to pay.